So in theory, life should have changed uh, in a very positive way for natives after the French and Indian War or after the Seven Years' War. In theory, uh, the victory of the British um, meant that the British crown had a heavier hand in terms of controlling things on the frontier of uh, colonial settlements. And one of the greatest victories from a native perspective um, that was an outcome of the Treaty of Paris in 1763 was the Proclamation Line of 1763, which was an imaginary line, you'll see it drawn on maps, but it was really imaginary, that ran all along the eastern seaboard, basically following the Appalachian Mountains um, when it could. And the British government proclaimed this line to be the furthest westward point of permissible colonial expansion. So native groups on the western side of this line were in theory protected by uh, the British monarch. What actually happened is that over time, very, very quickly actually, colonists became dissatisfied with this kind of centralized authoritarian control. And in fact, what they saw when they looked westward were vast lands that were ripe um, and ready for, for speculation, for settlement, and for colonization, a sort of a new colonization. And so this immediately uh, sets up um, one of many points of tension in the 1760s between the colonists on the ground in North America, the English colonists, and sort of the British royal authority and parliament and the king. Another really important piece of what takes place after the French and Indian War, the Seven Years' War, is that the French are completely removed as an imperial power from North America. If you are a Native American on the ground, in 1763, 1764, this is an incredible loss. The French have been present in North America, the Great Lakes region, down the Mississippi River, down Louisiana, up along the St. Lawrence River for a century, century and a half. And they have been active and vital trading partners. They actually are less land hungry than the English. And most native groups see them as an acceptable, uh, generally speaking, acceptable uh, presence um, in terms of trade and negotiation. When the French are gone, it means there's now no other imperial power with which local native groups can sort of play the English off of, right? So it, it, it turns into a situation where natives before could stand in between the British and the French and kind of vie uh, for different kinds of concessions and powers based upon threats they might make regarding the other empire. When the French are gone, that possibility is gone as well. And so almost immediately after the French Indian War, you have uh, native uh, revolts and backlash out among uh, the Great Lakes region, out in the Great Lakes region. One example of this is Pontiac's War that starts in 1763, the very year the Treaty of Paris is signed. And Pontiac, who was an Ottawa leader, leads a rebellion against the British because the British kind of move into these old French posts and immediately want to take over and even expand their presence and power. And natives see this as a very, very bad um, series of, of moves and a bad portend for the future.